Well, there was a lot of big talk in the lead-up to this summit. We saw French President Emmanuel Macron talk about a public finance shock. The head of the United, Nation, the, the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, talked about a reconfiguration of the global financial system. The aim is to address poverty and inequality, particularly in the context of the climate crisis. Now, today, we finally saw some uh, numbers. $200 billion over the next 10 years promised in the World Development Bank. We also saw the wealthy nations finally pledge that $100 billion that you mentioned. That was a real sticking point in the recent COP27 in Egypt. Voices in the Global South saying that the wealthier North simply wasn't willing to put money on the table. So that was positive, but in reality, we're far off from what impoverished countries really need. To put the $100 billion in context, last year, the estimate for damage it's done by extreme weather events related to climate was around $300 billion. Guterres has proposed an annual fund of half a trillion for these issues worldwide. Yesterday, we heard Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed saying we need a robust and predictable financial safety net, calling for more below market financing and grants. So, positive steps, but a complete reordering of the world's financial system is a way off yet. And Ken, we've also heard from uh, both the U.S. Treasury Secretary and uh, China's Premier, Li Chang, uh, what was said. Yes, right here behind me in the Palais Bronniere, we've had the summit. Uh, Li talked about how the EU and Chinese relations are at a new starting point, urging China and Europe to overcome their differences and work together towards world peace and stability. In terms of the summit, Li said that China is willing to help developing nations in any way it can through direct fun funding and financing, also supporting the international bodies like the IMF and the World Bank. He also encouraged multinationals and the private sector to invest more in emerging economies. Now, Li reiterated his call to keep global supply chains open and to push forward free trade and reject any type of protectionism. Uh, we also heard from the U.S. Uh, Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen. She talked about how China and the U.S. need to work together on the world's pressing issues. Here's what she said. Pleased to share this stage with colleagues from around the world, including Premier Li Cheng. As I said in a speech earlier in the year, as the world's two largest economies, we have a responsibility to work together on global issues. It's something we can do and something the world expects of us.